IWMS platform is really interesting because you can see if room reservations, being able to book your own um, space for the day, your meeting space, find an employee, wayfinding, all the things that a room reservation tool would do, book a conference room. Um, the functionality in, in the major IWMS systems in that room reservation functionality is really strong. And they're continuing to reinvest um, in that piece of the tool. So a couple of years ago, room reservation was kind of, you know, they were good, good enough, out, integrated with Outlook, easy enough to book a space. Now, some of the conversations that we're having are being led by something. So a conversation about technology starting with something as specific as room reservation um, broadens out to workplace facility management, et cetera. So Hello, and welcome to another episode of Open Source Workplace Interview Series. Uh, today, I'm very excited to have Katie Redman, from, uh, who is the Senior Director at Dell uh, Technologies. Uh, we're going to introduce Kitty in a few seconds, but if this is the first time visiting and, and listening to one of our videos, please make sure you subscribe, uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you receive uh, further updates whenever we post uh, videos in the future. So Katie, welcome. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing well. How are you this morning? Doing very well. Thank you. Doing very well. So th thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. Um, if you were to sort of sum yourself up in a, in a, in a short, short uh, bite, sound bite, what, what, how would you describe yourself and what you do? Yeah, so I'm a senior director with JLL Technologies. For those of you who have who've been following the CRE tech, prop tech world, um, JLL is a major player in this space. And we recently announced um, sort of the relaunch of the division that I support as JLL Technologies. Um, senior director, I'm on the solution development side. So I work with uh, clients and prospects in the Eastern US, and I also have a focus on our, our federal market. Great, great. And based in DC, obviously, that's why federal market is a right. big thing that's for right. you. There you go. There that's you go. Like public okay. institutions here in Washington, DC. Great, great, great. So, how did you get involved in workplace? I mean, what, what yeah. drew you to the, market, the, the environment? Great question. So, I came um, in an indirect path. So, um, many years ago, I was in a completely different industry and I was recruited into real estate, a small woman owned uh, business project management firm in Boston by way of several mergers and acquisition activities from 2006 until our, our first big one um, coming into JLL in 2016, um, the entity changed and grew, um, really adopted, early adopter of technology and technology consulting, um, third party software licenses and so on. Um, so mine was uh, kind of along for the ride. Every couple of years, the uh, landscape seems to change and it's really fun to be part of that. So you were actually acquired by JLL. What was it like working for a small startup moving to, you know, a behemoth like JLL? Well, there, there, there's a, a nice mid-sized company in the middle there. So from the small women-owned business, we were acquired by um, BRG, really well-known global workplace um, technology consulting firm. Um, and within about a year, together we were acquired by JLL. 2016 created JLL's Digital Solutions um, Group. Um, which again now has in turn grown exponentially and, and known now as JLL Technologies. Great, great. So what, what, what actually pushed you, or I don't know whether it was pulled you towards technology and the technology sector? So we started back in 2006, 2007, um, that small business I was part of, we used an IWMS system to plan and manage our own, pro our own projects. Um, we had a lot of clients that in time would ask to keep that, so we would re-license it. We kind of fell into the software advisory licensing um, model, uh, clients who loved the, the system. Um, over time, as we became part of BRG, that, of course, added several other products to um, sort of the, the license model and a really robust technology consulting and advisory uh, practice. So it was really a natural evolution if I sort of... Um, started my career really on the design, construction, project management, move management, furniture, et cetera. Um, it was a really natural move into 100% technology. And I, and I, I've loved the transition. Very good. Very good. And, and so obviously whenever you, the experience that you've had, and with, especially when it comes to corporate real estate tech, you know, wh where do you think that belongs? Does that belong in a real estate department or a technology department? That was something that, that, I really had to, to learn and, and hone over the, over the years. Um, I think you have to be able to speak both um, languages. So although my track came up through real estate facilities, occupancy planning, et cetera, 
Um, being able to speak to the, the IT group, CIO, a lot of the actual budget and decision making for some of the um, engagements that we manage are coming out of the IT side of the house. So where the stakeholders sit, um, I'll give you one example. As you know, I'm very active in Cornet. And at last, this past uh, January's technology symposium, um, we actually brought together a panel that included a CIO from a large defense contractor. And to be able to have that conversation between real estate business and IT business was really meaningful. I think it's only gonna become more closely integrated in time. Yeah, and the biggest challenge I find whenever it comes to real estate and technology is, is, is the vocabulary, right? That's the right, same right. words mean very different things. So how do, you, how do you educate real estate folks to understand technology and vice versa? Oh, that's a great question. I'll use this. Um, we're working on some programming now for agile in the workspace. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Someone right? says agile to me, yeah. being mired in technology for, for so long, um, it has really a different definition. I, I understand the commonality and how it's used in, in work, workplace, and it makes sense. Um, but that's a perfect example. So if I were to um, have a conversation with someone who was strictly IT, that would be a, a, a way of working, um, not a way of designing a workspace. It's actually kind of cool. I love that example because it's a neat way to see how these are coming together. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's uh, just as soon as you said agile, of course, <laughs> I, went, I went exactly just, just to that very point, you know, so yeah. that's great. Now, what's actually motivate, motivating a lot of your clients when it comes to implementing CRE technology within their real estate or within their organizations? Is it, are the, is the primary function to improve the employee experience or is it to access data or is it a combination of both or something else? We've actually been talking a lot about this internally. Um, so over the past few years, even, you know, let's look at two, 2016. So that's a really uh, milestone period for us. We still had engagements that were, I wouldn't say reactionary, but they were focused on solving a specific problem. Um, addressing a specific need. Um, where we are, what we are seeing now is more of a holistic approach to real estate technology where it's part of a, a broader initiative. It's, it's proactive, not reactive. Um, it's uh, jointly solving a problem and um, addressing a strategic need. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking to do um, is really support that transformation. So over time, it becomes less, hey, here's a point solution that solves FASB compliance. There's a great example. Solves like a very specific lease accounting need. Um, there's a rush to market for point solutions and maybe some um, decisions that are made based on timeline, not so much on, on you know, an actual due diligence exercise. So where we're really seeing that advisory piece of our business move is something that's really strategically aligned and more holistic. So we would evaluate what are the best combination of products. Um, the other thing I would say that's interesting to your question is even over the past year, um, really rapid consolidation in the market, um, the bigger real estate tech brands. So you have room reservation systems coming together with utilization and occupancy sensor um, companies with IWMS, the whole marketplace is changing fast. So being able to you know, take a step back help organizations really understand what that means. Um, that's been a real change over the past few years. Yeah, no, I mean, my experience when I'm sort of evaluating which system, what platform to go with, these were some of the factors we had to consider, right? So who has the global reach? Who can actually penetrate, you know, multiple regions because of different regulations, GDPR, GDPR if I can speak, mm -hmm. properly, but mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, but then also that consolidation, right? And the other thing that I sort of uh, struggled with and I understand is, um, and I think other companies go through it as well, the IWS systems are trying to create something that's generic, that matches for everybody, and they don't want to build custom solutions. And I totally understand it. Are you finding some of your clients are struggling with that or are actually are very open to that? You know, that's, a, that's another really interesting trend. It's something that, that I think has become... Um, a real hot topic even this past year. And then I've got a question for you about that. Um, so, you know, even over the past, let's say, say three years, when I was seeing a lot of heavy customization um, on premise uh, software tools that were so um, tailored to a, a customer specific uh, way of working and, and what they needed in their workflows almost impossible to upgrade these. An upgrade would really be a re-implementation. You'd have to go back and really restart. 
um, a lot of breaks in the system because if you know if you're really manipulating a, a software tool to that degree, it no longer is kind of what you started with. And I'm simplifying this. I'm using kind of my own layperson terms, but um, a, a great move, and I support it, and I know our team feels strongly about it as well. Towards let's say as close to out of the box as we can. You know, customizations are fine, especially if they're required. But maybe let's focus on configurations. Let's focus on ways of coming together, so business process and workflow, um, and then capability and functionality of the software tool that you use. Maybe there's a, a better meeting place than trying to fit a, a round peg in a square hole. So are you seeing the same? Is that from your seat? No, it's absolutely. I, I am actually yes, and and I I have I com have complete empathy for the software developers because they're trying to uh, you know accommodate everyone's request. Every organization is different. We talk about the language that's used between real estate and technology. Each company has their own language too. The met key metrics that they actually like to track is also often different as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it is something that is very front of mind for me and, and also um, the organization I work for. So it absolutely is, 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 is top of mind. But I, I have empathy as well because obviously a lot of these organizations are trying to build something that has long-term value for all their customers. So yeah, so it's it's kind of interesting. So whenever you have implemented and you sort of evaluate these technologies, obviously open source workplace comes from maximizing workplace productivity and employee experience. Is there specific metrics that you think are more vital than others when it comes to tracking and monitoring and sort of provide a better ROI for organizations to consider? That's a great, that is a really hot topic now and a great question. So um, let me segment that a little bit. So on, um, let's just talk about the HR side of the house. So talent recruitment, talent retention, oh, that, that's really important. I was meeting with one of our um, clients uh, uh, last week talking about this and how does technology have a place in that HR initiative of recruitment and retention. Employee experience, you could Google that now and find lots of, of real estate occupancy planning, workplace strategy related topics um, around employee experience. But from my point of view, coming at it from a technology question, um, what's happening in mobile now is really, really exciting. So what can you do to enable that employee um, to really move through their work day um, in an efficient way, kind of accomplish all they need to do um, on their mobile device? That's been great. Um, and then the other piece of it is on the bigger the ROI question and how do you actually measure that investment in technology? Um, I think a lot of it comes down to efficiency and productivity. So hard to measure, but there are ways that we can put metrics in place. Um, you know, each customer is different, but what's, what's important to them is productivity defined by, um, you know, output over a given week, month, year, et cetera. Is it um, employee engagement and attention? Is it straight business growth? So um, there's a, a a place for this conversation to link all of these. And if it's happening in siloed ways within an organization that um, HR and IT and real estate aren't together talking about what that ROI might be, um, I think that's when we see technology initiatives that really kind of come to a grinding halt and yeah. they pause for a while, right? So is there actually solutions out there that brings those three together on one platform? Uh, yeah, that's a great, that is a great question. So um, we're seeing a lot of that, the IWMS market, integrated workplace management systems, they've been um, really at the forefront of bringing different functionality together that support both employee experience and workplace management facilities, all that. So what's really cool is they're evolving, and this is maybe a topic for another conversation on sort of cloud and what a SaaS model means for, for, for you know, rapid, rapid uh, product development and improvement. Um, but in any event, the IWMS platform is really interesting because you can see if room reservations, being able to book your own um, space for the day, your mini space, find an employee, wayfinding, all the things that a room reservation tool would do, book a conference room. Um, the functionality in, in the major IWMS systems in that room reservation functionality is really strong and they're continuing to reinvest um, in that piece of the tool. So a couple of years ago, room reservation was kind of, you know, they were good, good enough, out, integrated with Outlook, easy enough to book a space. Now, some of the conversations that we're having are being led by something. So a conversation about technology starting with something as specific as room reservation um, broadens out to 
workplace facility management, et cetera. So I hope that answers your question. No, no, absolutely. It does. And, and, and that's sort of what my intuition was. And that's sort of things that I'm seeing, because I think ultimately the winners are going to be the ones who actually bring those three elements together. Right. Um, and I'm sure, I'm sure that's what you're seeing in the marketplace. So the final question that I always ask everybody, if you had one piece of advice or guidance, um, whether you've witnessed what you've experienced, be it at JLL or, or anywhere else, um, what would that be to sort of what you would put forward is to maximize product, workplace productivity and employee experience? Okay, so um, to maximize workplace productivity and employee experience, um, I think really listen, if you're in the corporate real estate or the advisory position, really listen to what that specific organization is all about. What business are they in? I mean, we talk in a broad sense about employee experience and productivity, um, but that's going to vary sector by sector. Financial services, for example, is going to have um, different metrics and different motivators than, say, um, automotive or technology, healthcare, et cetera. So I think um, we can't lose sight of the importance of the business and what um, makes the business successful because there's no one size fits all in that question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no, I totally, totally agree. Agree. So uh, look, thank you, Katie. Thank you for your time. Is there anything you want to touch on before we before we leave? You know, the only last thing I would say is, <clears throat> excuse me, and this is a term that really comes from actually edu education. Um, so you'll see in, in um, school education for children, the topic digital literacy. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we've been thinking about a lot. Is there, are there ways that we can help the CRE FM community really improve their understa basic understanding of technology? Um, what the, look, we, we started our conversation with that vocabulary, how they can walk down the hall and talk with their IT professionals and really find common ground um, on what they're trying to um, accomplish. So I think I'd like to see that over time as more programming that offers a level playing field, maybe integrated programming where we have um, IT leaders and real estate leaders together talking about objectives, challenges, et cetera. That's the last thing I would leave us. Great, great. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you, uh, you, you giving me the time and, and uh, I hope the audience finds value, which I'm sure they will. And I hope, uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank Bye. you.